my standard day that we do next week is going to be a testing ground. It's going to be C are people interested in watching standard and how well do the videos do on YouTube after the fact? So if standard day goes well next week, then I will probably take normal $10 standard donation decks. If it doesn't go well, I'm only going to take standard decks for the increased price because if it's not popular, I make less ad money that way. So I need to be compensated for that in some other way to, to dip into it. It's basically what it comes down to. Modern doesn't have a metagame. You should pick any deck that has a proactive game plan and reasonable disruption and you'll be fine. Shadow, Shadow meets those requirements, so it's a fine deck. It's a deck that can both kill people and disrupt people who are trying to kill it faster. Hot take, there is nothing wrong with banning Magic the Gathering cards. Banning a Magic the Gathering card that's creating a miserable play experience is not a failure on Wizards of the Coast's part. In fact, I would say it's a success that they are sculpting their format into something that's otherwise enjoyable to play. I think a failure on Wizards of the Coast's part would be if they let a card that was making the format not fun to play continue to exist. Because Magic, contrary to popular belief, is a game that you should be playing for enjoyment. This hand is pretty bad. Five lands, no utility land really sucks, but like it's kind of hard to pass up Mana Dork into three drop. They have Mulligan to five. I'm like, our five card hand is great, right? right? Like if I, if I had three land Souls Noble Herrick, I'd be like snapping off. I would run zero Dark Confidants and four Tireless Trackers. Like many things you can find my preferred, you can find my preferred um, green black deck list on my website, jeffhoagland.com. Worth noting, this is the one foil Gavany Township that could be another Mana Dork or a Path to Exile here. And while Path to Exile might be okay against whatever this is that they have going on, this is definitely better than a Mana Dork at this point, right? Looking like, uh, looking like fish. Vile Mutavolt could be fairies, but definitely fish. So, do I wait to Thoughtseize and risk them not having anything to Thoughtseize later? I think I'm supposed to thought seize here. Hmm. I think I just take this because it makes Master of Waves much worse. Uh, the spell, the spell appears actually kind of annoying here. I think I'm going to go ahead and offer this trade. Like it can't block and like, I'm pretty happy if they take this trade. I think I'm going to, I'm going to meet myself off and on here really quick. We don't have a ton of decisions. I need a snack. Thanks for watching folks. You could have music on your stream right now. Your computer in 2018 can run a secondary application in the background, allowing you to do gasp more than one thing at once. It's this really weird novel idea, but trust me, it's beautiful and will change your life. And if you're about to tell me 
that you're using a cell phone and your cell phone can't do two things at once, sell your iPhone and get a real device. If I had, if I had to venture a guess, I would estimate that this matchup is probably pretty hard for us. We only have, we have some spot removal here, but their creatures get larger on average than ours do. I think Soren Solemn Visitor is one of our better tools for stealing this matchup because of the giant health swings that it can generate. I think I like boarding like this. If your Android phone can't watch music and do it at the same time, I'd, I'd also recommend selling that and getting a reasonable device. Yeah, I agree, White Seal. I think I think this this matchup probably isn't as bad as like the Elves matchup that we lost yesterday, but I definitely think we're we're playing a little bit from behind. Seems pretty good. Go just good, good, strong curve here. Temple Garden Souls Gideon. Collected Brutality somewhere in the mix as well. Spot removal. I was considering putting a fourth path to exile in the deck somewhere, and like this is the style of matchup where I definitely would want that kind of effect. There you go. There's a Pandora station. That's all my music that I listen to while I work out. Enjoy. Yeah, honestly, the biggest problem with Android devices is anybody can sell them. So there's a lot of companies that like sell sell Android devices that either have bad hardware or are crippled by bad software. So you actually have to like do a little research and be informed to get a decent one. Someday I'll save up thousands of dollars to make you do Fish Friday for a 24 hour work folk stream. So, uh, you know, I'd say that's not possible, but that's a lie. Money can buy anything on this channel. It's just like, this channel is just like everywhere else in life. Money can buy whatever you want. They're playing KCI for some months. Whenever I see a player fetch shock and start the game at 17, I feel anxious. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta do it. And honestly, like, you know, again, talking back about the green, black rock deck, like one of the big appeals in my mind to that archetype is just like the fact that your mana is so good. We could get spell pierced here, but I'm definitely just like into jam this. I guess I could flashback souls plus play birds of paradise here. And then I can cast Gideon through spell pierce next turn. But I also feel like Spell Pierce, ah, Spell Pierce is probably a card that's still in their deck. Yeah, the mana base in the green black deck got better when I got to cut the, the fourth field of rune. Four field of runes always felt like one too many. Merfolk Trickster, this is weird sequencing on this. I think I'm actually gonna leave all my tokens back here because I don't want them to be able to pressure Gideon this turn. I'm still like, I cut the fourth field for a fifth creature land, Pikes. 
Nah, I like I like Creature Land. Call me Creature Land, Hog Land. I like I like killing people with Creature Lands. Treetop Village is Bay, and like there was no room to fit the second Treetop Village in and keep your block sources, so like you had to cut a colorless source. Honestly, I just love creature lands. Um, anytime you're at a, you're at an impasse and you're like, should I play another land or should I play another spell? The answer is play a creature land. Just every time. While we're talking about unique lands, can we can we take a moment and talk about how much of a travesty it is that um, how much of a travesty it is that temples haven't been reprinted yet? It is like a complete and total travesty, right? How do you feel about double block here? Double block beats a lord, but it loses to... I think I double block. It loses to like lord plus... Re excuse me, removal spell. But I think I'm okay with that. Like I just like make another token and flashback souls next turn potentially. If they put a lord into play now, I'm gonna collect a brutality kill it next turn too, which is like which is ideal. No, I think I think temples are generic enough that you could you could put them anywhere. Like lots of lots of Worthoses have temples. Like should we do the artwork or whatever? But I think that the idea of a temple is just like just like great. Do you have dismember or echoing truth here? They do not. I don't know that I have enough experience with Merfolk to give reasonable advice on it. Another Black Source here is a great draw because it means I can collect a Brutality and Flashback Souls and play Birds of Paradise. And then next turn we just get to like go to Pound Town with this Gavany Township. Yeah, opponent, opponent's real dead. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that too. Like having having eight temples in Modern isn't going to do anything. So like you could totally functionally reprint temples. 10 out of 10 agree with that. I was, I was, when they printed temples, I would have bet money after playing with them for three months that like these were going to become the evergreen, especially when like they printed temples and then announced that Scry was evergreen now. And I was like, easy in, like these are just, these are the default dual lands now. Like screw buddy lands. These lands are way better for reducing variants that magic has. And then just like, they haven't reprinted them. And I'm incredibly sad that they haven't. What am I doing on turn one here? Am I fetching basic forest or am I shocking in temple garden? I think I'm fetching basic forest. I feel, I feel bad if they spread me regardless. Like they have to spread me plus kill the bird here. See, I think basic forest is actually definitely the best against spreading seas, right? Congrats, Yori. 90 people is a lot of people. Well, I don't, I don't want to use my, I don't want to put a spreading seas on my wall. I want to put like a Lord on my wall. Spreading seas is not the card I want to nail to me. Huh. They didn't spread me last turn, so I think I'm going to play the Temple Garden out and risk it getting spread this turn. Hundred and ninety four people. Yeah, they could they could be holding up spell pierce here. That's very true. 
Probably want to take it a little bit slow and steady here because of that. I also have like two Gideons, but like the tempo swing from getting my Gideon Spell Pierce is probably pretty savage. Mm, so they have the Spreading Seas and they wanted to just hold up Spell Pierce. That makes a lot of sense. That's a good good read. Yeah, I think I think this spreading so like this spreading seas plays, we can read this in one of two ways. Either one, they just drew the spreading seas, but I think I think the read that they're they're potentially sandbagging a spell pierce is reasonable. Are we like upkeep tapping my bird? Is that what is that what we're doing here? Sure, I guess. I don't think that's spooky. I think like they spread me off of one of my colors, just like trying to slow me down. I definitely think like as the game goes along, I'm more favored than they are, right? So like trying to like keep me constantly slowed down seems fine. I'm gonna shock this in and like play this into the spell piercer they've been holding up. Cause like something in my hand's gonna have to eat the spell pierce at some point. Because like this eating the spell pierce here means that next turn I get to go collective brutality plus assassin's trophy and not get either of those spell pierced, hopefully. Anybody claiming that Assassin's Trophy is going to hate hate decks out of the format just doesn't understand how modern works. Assassin's Trophy is going to be just like Fatal Push. It's just going to be another card that sees plagues. It's like a playable card. It's nothing. It's nothing to get all up in arms about and act like the world is ending. I think Gideon's great. That's why I've got four of them in my deck. He's a very reasonable Magic the Gathering card. I have, I have, uh, I have a bird of paradise. Birds, birds of paradise is like the card that makes. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Gosh, my opponent's being so rude. I'm trying so hard to cast my spells, opponent. Stop it! Stop it! Please stop. I disagree with that, Tefri. I think unmoored ego is exactly like damping sphere in that. It's fine in the right shell, but it's also just like not going to change anything for the most part. It's like another playable card that's going to see play in modern and that like that's great. Like more playable cards in the format is great. But again, anybody, anybody telling you that like unmoored ego is going to change everything. Just like I don't think that kind of person doesn't get what what goes on in modern, like how this format works. Kill Drain. Am I ditching a Gideon or this extra bird? I mean, it's pretty hard to die when you take their only card that matters, Tefri. Like, that's, that's the point. I, I think Unmoored Ego is going to be a lot like Surgical Extraction in that a lot of people boarded in when they shouldn't. I think I think that's definitely true. I think there's gonna be a ton of people that board in unmoored ego when it has no business being in their deck. But I don't I don't think that makes it a bad card. And it just like makes it a card like surgical extraction. It's just like playable but doesn't belong in your deck against everything. Yeah, it picks up unmoored ego, among other things. Ego. Ego should come in against like Valakut and Tron. I wouldn't even board in Ego against Storm because Storm has multiple avenues to victory. And I think there's going to be a lot of people that board that card in against things like Storm. Sure, but like Surgical's free. Like the fact that Surgical costs zero mana is huge.
opponent played this game really well. They correctly identified which pieces of my mana they wanted to attack and then executed that attack well. Thanks for shipping your Bezo bucks this way. I appreciate that. This is a Lord we're probably dead. Like I said, I don't I don't think I'd classify this matchup as unwinnable, but I definitely think we're behind. That game was a good example of like one of the many ways they can kind of keep us off kilter. I need to GM. If this deck, we'll see how the next four matches go. If this if this deck feels okay with the next four matches, I think I need to jam some games into humans with this to see how that feels. I definitely don't want to play a deck that's soft to humans at the open this weekend. No, I don't think it's that cut and dry armored shoes. For instance, um, I would board in Surgical Extraction against Tron with Green Black Rock because uh, Green Black Rock has seven ways to stone rain, seven to eight ways to stone rain Tron lands. So like build your own crumble to dust with your stone rain into Surgical is like fine against Tron. Yeah, the plan is to test with Kent. I actually was talking with Kent this afternoon. So if this league goes well again this evening, um, I'm going to then do a testing session with Kent to see how that feels. Nine months since that prime fling. Thank you on Band Twin for the nine month resub there. Thanks for keeping me employed for another. Welcome back. I don't think I can keep this. Pretty sure I just like one of Thought Caesar or a Mana Dork in my opener. If they're like a Hollowed Fountain deck, this hand is great. Or another Thought Seize deck. I don't know. I could definitely see this being a mulligan. Some kind of Cesarator deck? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, Kent, Kent's playing Legacy for us. Um, Chris Van Meter has like the highest open top eight percentage for week one standard opens out of like anybody who's ever played on the tour. His, his conversion rate is absurd. He's very good at new standard. Uh, Scrylands. Scrylands reduce variance. So basically what I'm saying is if we don't, if my team doesn't top eight, it's my fault. That's, that's what I'm saying. Hey, right. no spell peers, so you're dead to Chad. Oh. Oh, they're playing. I have to imagine their hand's really good. I assume they kept a hand that like has most of their things then. There is there is this grinding station combo deck that was going around for a hot second. What do you what do you got here? We actually played it on stream at one point. Uh no, uh SCG opens are top uh top eight for for the cut. Who's my favorite streamer to watch when I'm not working? Whoever who's ever streaming modern? Um, I 
Yeah, Sly, Sly's a combo piece, right? But they like, they also have sword were for the other thing. They aren't Detroit. They cut to top eight. I think I take Sly Requisitioner here. And then I cast Lingering Souls. And then I plus Chad and attack for seven. And then next turn I can Emblem. I think this deck's very reasonable. This is one of the two decks I'm considering playing at the Open this weekend. This, this, or Green Black Rock. I don't think we're in danger of getting comboed next turn, but their deck also has like a lot of really back weird backdoor combo type lines. No, I just kind of want to play something with Trophy. Yeah, I'm going to be in Columbus. It's close enough to drive for me. It's only five, five and a half hours. We used to, we used to drive five and a half hours to opens all the time when I was a kid. It called, we considered that a short drive. Anything, anything less than six was short and drivable. Gosh, we were dumb. I've, I've driven, I've driven Columbus as a seven hour drive because we drove in the snow. That's the best. Ooh, they drew the Thopter Foundry naturally. Okay. Yep. Up for grabbing a drink at Columbus? Yeah, definitely. I think we're getting, we're gonna, I think we're leaving like Friday at noon. So we're probably gonna get in early-ish and have time to do stuff on Friday too. I haven't lined up a buyer for my damaged my damaged trophies yet. I probably should do that. Why are we do they they're gonna be damaged because I offered to sign them? For anybody who's never never worked in the, the grading industry. Um, any any cards that are that are signed are, are graded as damaged. Kino, thank you for the seven month resub there. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Yeah, especially not order signatures, exactly. Oh, I could double emblem for lethal. That's a good, that's a good line. I didn't, I didn't think about that. I missed it. What is this doing? I don't, I think Assassin's Trophy means we're not dead, but I don't actually know that for certain. So I'm gonna wait and see what they do. I mean, Bridge doesn't save them. They have uh, three cards in their hand. That's, uh, that's a KCI. Um, Huh. No, double, double emblem hit for, this is uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. No, sorry, this is seven, eight, double emblem hit for 12. 
Double Emma would have dealt four more. So the question, the question is, what do I want to kill? I just killed the KCI in response, right? Their hand is Sword of the Meek, Grinding Station, Scrap Trawler. If I kill this, they have enough to Scrap Trawler plus get this back. But if I do that, chat, they don't, they don't have infinite, they don't have infinite life, chat. I have Assassin's Trophy that kills a thing. Calm down. McCarver, thank you for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. I, we're not. We're not dead. They're, they're not infinite. Yeah, they buy it back. They can't recast it, right? Oh wait, they can recast it because Scrap Trawler. They bin the Mox Opal and then recycle the Mox Opal with the Grinding Station and the Nile Spell Bomb. So I think I, I just kill the KCI, right? If I kill the KCI, if I, no, the, the priority's on me. I'm in the tank. Yeah, I think I, I, think I just killed the KCI, right? Because they can't, they scroll, trawler doesn't get KCI back. No, we're a couple cards different. So they're going to sacrifice three things here and get six mana, which lets them play sword and then make four tokens going up to six. Oh, weird. Oh, this, this nets the mana, right? I think... This is... I, I deserve this. I missed lethal last turn. We could have gone emblem, emblem, and killed them instead of flashing back lingering souls. I've returned to you live for my timeout. Here's some bits to make. Oh, for my timeout. Here's some bits to make it snappy. Thank you for the support, Retro. I appreciate that. I believe there's a combination of cards that still let them kill us this turn. I don't know. We're just going to hang tight and watch this happen. I feel like they didn't use their KCI efficiently there. Yeah, they could have they could have sacked Spellbomb, Opal, Grinding Station, and KCI for eight mana, and then like played Sword of the Meek and then done a bunch of terrible stuff to us. Stealing game one here is absurd, because I get to board this in. Welcome to Thunderdome. It's probably a matchup where I don't want Sorin. Because this is not a matchup that's about health swings. Bitter Blossom, it's not really about grinding. Yeah, I should definitely board a land out. I'm going to cut this last Gavany Township. I don't think I want Knights in this matchup. I guess they do beat down. Maybe they're better than some Lingering Souls. Knight is, Knight is basically removal, that's true. I'm bringing in a couple of rips, so maybe trade these. And Knight's like, again, like, Knight's a good card because, like, the floor on it's just, like, a 4-3 that kills them quickly. 
We're boarding out of land because we're on a we're on the draw, and this isn't really a Gavany Township matchup. This is a matchup that's about uh, we have a lot of lands in our deck, and this is a matchup that's not really about going along with Gavany Township. I think I like this. Let's give this a try. In in high land count decks, boarding out lands is something that that that's something that it comes up. It comes up more in standard because modern a lot of decks are like cheating on their land count a lot. But like I've got twenty five, I got twenty six lands in this deck tonight actually, and we usually always play at least twenty five. So this hand doesn't have any of my high impact sideboard cards, but I think it's definitely a keep. It it was uh, it was a catastrophe as advertised, Brecken. So Sphere does stop their Memnite combo, but I think that's too narrow to bring in. Storm is three. Definitely want a Thought Seize on one here, I think. Because we would not have had anything to Thought Seize on two. Do I just want to trophy this? I think I just want to trophy this, right? Memnite is part of their infinite combo. I am not showing what my teammates are playing in Legacy or either format. They've, they've accepted that I'm doing my testing for modern on stream, but I'm not going to do them a disservice. A potential disservice in letting people know what deck they're playing. Thanks, McCarver. I appreciate the support. I think I, I, think I just want to... And I want to trophy the Scrap Trawler now. Because if I wait to trophy it next turn, they... Uh, what's the word I'm searching for? They can sack the spell bomb to draw a card in response, which means they'll be able to pick the spell bomb back up. No, I don't need to apologize for asking. I just want to be clear why I'm not sharing their deck list. Their island choice is sweet. It's like on theme for both what their deck is, just like the Phyrexia, Phyrexia Island. Love it. We've we've tried that, Nanzonel. I've got one more try for a Saltai deck I want to take a crack at, but Saltai Saltai is just pretty consistently lackluster. I'm gonna play this Horizon Canopy out. Um I don't really want to play Nissa this turn, I don't think. I don't wanna just hang tight here. So our primary goal in this current game I'm playing is don't die to these Memnites attacking us for one. Yeah, we want we want some threats here, ideally. That's kind of scary, because it lets them turn, like, we're kind of in danger of just, like, dying to mediocre beats at the moment. Sure, it ma I, I agree that it matters less, but saying it doesn't matter at all is disingenuous. Being like, if you're a good player, it doesn't matter if they know your deck list at all. Like, that's just, like, stupid and wrong. Is that are things that are not correct for 100. I agree that, like, knowing your deck list is not everything. Like, I regularly stream what I'm doing here, but, like... I'm going to put the trophy down here. They can kill my Nyssa if they want by, like, making some Thopters here. But, like, my bird also gets to eat one of those. No, I'm playing Tokens or Abzan. I'm playing, sorry, Tokens or Green Black Rock. Playing one of these two decks.
Do you taste that, chat? I do. Is that, is that the taste of victory? Please, please tell me more about the sideboard cards that exist in this format. Hey chat, do you think they're getting a Sword of the Meek here? Do I do I just trophy this in response? Right? I just I just 10 out of 10 trophy this in response, right? I well so like actually here's again I want to think about this for a moment. Does trophying it in response actually do anything? So like if I trophy this in response, they like sack this, this, and this, and get three tokens, right? So like it doesn't actually change anything. I'm not sure I have a reason to trophy this in response. I think they still make three tokens if I do that. Right? Like they're down Mox Opal Darksteel Citadel, but like my Stony Silence is about to resolve. So like they're down Mox Opal Darksteel Citadel regardless. I think I just say this is fine. They don't have a 2-3 Thopter? That's fair, but like I could just like trophy the 2-3 Thopter too though. Uh, engineered Explosives is not an out to Sony Silence. Think about it. Oh. Hey, Nyan, thank you for the six month three subscription there. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Oh. So we're going to gain a couple points of health here. We're really looking to draw like a Lingering Souls or, or a Sorin. I guess we don't have Sorin in our deck now. I guess Gideon is okay. I mean, but like they, so dorks, again, the same reason why I would not want to do this in response to the Sword Trigger, they're going to get the same number of tokens regardless because... What's the word that I'm searching for? Because um, because they have plenty of artifacts that aren't going to be doing anything here. Yeah, I should I should crack canopy here and like find another card here potentially. Yeah, I think the trophies are really good in this deck. Just like an easy upgrade. I'm they were gonna have this number of tokens regardless chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Nissa alive this turn regardless Because I'm gonna get to go block block trophy this 2-3 Thopter and then they can't equip this or activate these things anymore uh, You can always find the deck list of decks I've played in the past on my youtube channel youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland you hit show more and in the descriptions you're gonna find you're going to find... Oh, I can't block a Thopter with this one. That makes sense. Uh, I think this is fine. So we have Nissa in play. That's pretty good. Um... 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and pass the turn here. And then next turn we'll go Nissa down tick, second Nissa down tick, start pressuring. They did fail to find. That's actually something worth noting. Cheering for the Grave Titan soon. Soon, Friday. You have another Thopter Foundry. <laughs> I love the closing power this deck has. Green Black Rock's a better interactive deck than this, but this deck like has like just the right amount of interaction and a good amount of kill you. Huh. Assuming we'll know about not happen. Correct. Yeah, the Grave Titan deck is getting played on Friday. Guaranteed 100%. Attack my Nissa. She's all lonely and in the cold. Got anthems for days, chat. Allow me to sing you the song of my people. Better better permanent basic cards like Sony Silence and Rest in Peace are a big turn on for Abzan as well. This token stack. Uh, we we were streaming an Abzan deck with Leon and Arbiter and Assassin's Trophy. That was this channel. What's going on, folks? Welcome. Speaking of this channel, I'm Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic, mostly modern, 30-plus hours a week. Frank and Bean. This is a lot like Green White Standard Tokens. Thank you for the bits. Um, if you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their support. If you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, if you link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, you get Twitch Prime included with that for free. And Twitch Prime gives you a free channel subscription every single month to a channel of your choice here on Twitch. Um, it doesn't cost you anything extra and supports my content just the same as that normal $4.99 a month sub. Past subscribing, you can also support myself by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com will love to buy and sell some Magic Online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal and check out with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. BCW Supplies would love to help you protect your very valuable Magic cards and lots of other gaming accessories. They do sleeves and deck box and all sorts of other great stuff. And you can save 10% on your orders at BCWSupplies.com by using code Jeff10. And of course, Lisa would like to get you on your way to a better night's sleep. Chris and I have been sleeping with Lisa for the last... Uh, three months now and we really enjoy it. I don't think we'd ever go back to traditional pillow top mattress. You can save $160 or more on your new mattress with them by checking out links bit.ly forward slash Googlebed US and bit.ly forward slash Googlebed CA. Uh, no, no, I don't have any regularly scheduled weekend streams. I generally always try to do at least one stream per weekend, but I don't guarantee it on any particular day or time slot so I can be flexible to do stuff with the family this weekend i'm going to be streaming a bunch extra though because we've got uh guilds has released and i want to find test the deck that i am looking to play for the open next weekend so i'm going to be live in addition to tonight i'm also going to do a normal eight hour stint tomorrow i think i'm also going to uh only be doing a short stream on friday so i want to make sure i get get a good amount of hours streamed in even though i'm going to be off most of friday and this next weekend since we're going to columbus All right, let's do it. Onward, upward, backward, forward. Aces of death with the five dollar donation. Thanks for the tip. Can I support the stream this way? Of course you can. Thanks for keeping me employed here. I would love to play first. Yeah, I think this is a keep. Uh, I don't know what March of the Multitudes does offhand. How are we doing so far? We're doing all right. I, I haven't played a match yet that's made me go, you know what? I'm not playing this deck next weekend, so... Yeah, 
Yeah, this could be... This is a 26th land slash 4th Gavany Township at the moment. So I'm not sure what I want this lot to be. So one of my 4 Gavany Townships currently is Foil. God bless it. Turn 1 Horizon Canopy. Burn. Urgh. Brutal. All right, that's a that's a good pickup. We also have this Elves of Deep Shadow here, which makes mana for Sorin, but also hurts me. It's like kind of a mixed bag. <laughs> oh, bitter blossom! I'm gonna offer a trade here. See if my elves are dead or not. If we get to stick this, we could have a very real chance here. If we don't get to stick that, we're probably going to get run out of the game. Yeah, Sorin. Sorin gains a lot of hit points, and he goes to five immediately. Because, like, even if they just, like, kill, kill Sorin here, he still gained us a bunch, right? All right, so we got Skull Cracked. Um, since we got Skull Cracked, I'm going to attack with one spirit here because these keep the lifelink until my next turn. So leaving a spirit in play to block, potentially, like hedges against, like, goblin guides and stuff like that. Oh, I think I am just holding for now. Searing Blaze is pretty brutal. If they want to point a lightning bolt at one of these, I think I'm okay with that. I I agree with that assessment brick house. Solemn Visitor is much better and it's not particularly close. Matches like this are one of the reasons why I had three sword and solemn visitor previously. We're probably dead here. We needed, we needed them to not have that skull crack. We need to either draw lands or have them not have that skull crack. And five turns without ever drawing a land in our 26 land deck. Pretty clean. Thought sees Bitter Blossom, a Gavity Township out, Brutality, Path, Knight of Autumn in. Seems reasonable.
Why do I seem to like team opens more than individual opens? What where'd you hear that? There's just more more team opens than individual opens, so I'm more likely to go to one of those because, well, there's more of them. I think both team and non-team formats have their ups and downs. This thing is really bad. This hand is also not particularly good. This is a keep. I don't know, Sham Shambling Mint's like pretty okay. Two drop, please. Classic moto, scry card to bottom, draw draw a copy of card. I'm gonna grab an overgrown tomb here. It gives me a second black source. And that way I can fetch a basic planes with the Spongebob teeth. The fact that they stumbled on lands here might make this draw good enough. It's definitely going to be a bit of an uphill battle though. So we'll do souls into basic planes. Uh, Gideon. I'll take some amount of damage here. I'm definitely double blocking the goblin guide to like force a lightning bolt on it if they have one. There's a Nissa on top. Nissa on top is pretty good. That means my turn five can be flashback souls plus Nissa. Bolting a token here is a win for me. Which they agree with, so they're bolting me. That makes sense. I like that line from the opponent. Pretty, pretty unlikely to die. Actually, I think it's impossible for us to die next turn since they're on one land. This way I get to go Gideon, make a token, and then next turn I could even go Gideon Emblem, attack with Shambling Vent for three. Like, probably isn't unreasonable. I am going to snap off a block with this Knight token if it's offered. Although I suppose they could have a Searing Blaze here. No Searing Blaze is great for us. Double Rift Bolt Suspend. Yep. Uh, JAC got bumped. Yeah, I think we're dead. I think we're, sorry, I think we're likely dead. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to play the bird too. I think I'm definitely supposed to. I guess I guess I could make a token and attack, but if I because I fetched here, I kind of want to go to ten. I think it's play bird emblem hit for three. Just like hope not to die. Like I said when we kept this hand, it was really slow. Probably should have gone to five. They have two. The issue here for those that are just joining us, they have two rift bolts suspended. I don't think that's true, JoJo. Like, did you did you watch the first game? Like, I think that's like being super results biased. Like, I almost won the first game with having my turn one land be Horizon Canopy. Like, they had to they had to have a very the, the issue isn't sideboard cards. Like, that's I think that's a cop out a lot of people use in matches like this a lot of the time. The issue is that I kept a I kept a bad hand in this game, and then in the first game I had Horizon Canopy on one. 
And like, I, I had a rising canopy on one and never drew a land in our 26 land deck. So like, there were a lot of things that went wrong here and none of them to me indicate that like, the issue was that we didn't draw our sideboard cards. Yeah, canopy plus Elves of Deep Shadow even, right? Like, I think in general, we have a lot of things that you want to have going on against Burn. We have main deck health gain. I have a way to flood the board very quickly. And then, and then that game, it was an issue of not seeing my sideboard cards. It was an issue of, like, keeping a hand that didn't make a play till turn three against a deck that's, like, extremely efficient. And that's, and that's one of the things that's, like, makes Magic such a challenging game is that, like, if you watch a game like that and your takeaway is, like, I should have drawn my sideboard cards, like, that can be, that can be, like, a frustrating takeaway and doesn't allow you to, like, make changes or adapt as a player. Like, there's a, there's a level that you have to be at in Magic to even, like, understand where your mistakes are coming from. I can definitely, it's one of, it's one of the hardest things to get over is being able to, like, realize, like, when it was on you and when it wasn't and like that first game definitely was not on me it was just a bad beat but like the second game i definitely had control over the decisions i made that game and i think i made poor ones the decision points that i had we are probably dead yeah i'm, I'm just i think i think that league i think that league acts as tokens for me I don't really watch streamers, but you keep me coming back. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Crossroads, for the two months there. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and call that league there. With this, deck. this deck is just never beating elves. This deck is fun, and I think it has something competitive going on there. But I think, I think I'm going to play just play Green Black Rock in, uh, in Columbus. That deck's very good. We 4 one with it very consistently. We'll have to play some more of that this week for sure. So this deck's already very good against grindy decks. So like maximizing your sideboard against decks you're already good against is something that's poor deck building in my opinion. So yeah, I don't know. I think I think I'm gonna leave the list with ten dorks and and honestly, I think the third sword and solemn visitor is very reasonable, especially because of matchups like burn. So I don't think I was happy with the changes I made to this, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out of my thing for now. And this will this would be a fine deck. I definitely take donations to play this again in the future, but I think I'm gonna shelve this as a deck that I'm willing to play for the Open coming up next weekend. I think the blue-red deck is fine, but I just want to play something different at the Open. I played the blue-red deck at the last event. The blue-red deck is going to be one of my considerations for uh, the SCG Con, the Invitational, but for the Open next weekend, I want to play something new. Thanks for the half year, Jeff. Love what you do. Make sure you keep it up. Malt Meister, thanks for keeping me here. And D20Bandit, thanks for the support. Nivik, are you here? Are you around, Nivik? Are you okay with me playing this deck next if I also play JAC tonight? If you'd like JAC right now, that's fine. I'll just play that as my last one. But if you would... I already have the cards for this, so I, I'm willing to play both of these tonight. Perfect, so... We'll do we'll do this and then JAC afterwards. Perfect. 